Dr. Bradshaw had only been working at the SCP Foundation for a few years, but in that time he had seen things that had changed him irreparably. Ancient texts about world-ending abominations, machines that could spontaneously produce any food or drink from nowhere, friendly slime monsters with a penchant for tickling, invisible kleptomaniac women and wannabe heroic men covered in spikes. But one anomaly in particular stuck with him, haunted his dreams, and dominated his waking thoughts. SCP-049, that mysterious masked doctor with his deadly touch and strange beaked visage, trying in vain to cure something he would only refer to as, quote, the pestilence and, quote, the great dying. His cure was more like a curse, it seemed, as his unusual treatments transformed his patients into the mindless living dead, shuffling around as malformed shells of their former selves. If this was the cure, Dr. Bradshaw found himself often wondering, what was the disease? Many researchers had attempted to get to the bottom of this question over the years, interviewing SCP-049 and nurturing their own pet theories in their free time, but none had ever received a satisfying answer, ever reached a real conclusion. It was this legacy of fruitless hypothesizing and questioning that led Dr. Bradshaw to pitch his own plan for unmasking the pestilence once and for all. He would gather every prominent theory his colleagues could come up with, including several of his own. Then he would simply engage the Plague Doctor in polite discourse, walking him through each theory one by one and waiting to see if any of them stuck. It took Dr. Bradshaw weeks to collect and distill the theories down into a workable list of questions, consolidating those that overlapped and eliminating those that were simply ridiculous, such as Dr. Bright's potentially facetious insistence that the pestilence was lactose intolerance. But when the day came, he felt ready to take on the task. When the interview was through, perhaps he would have managed to do what none before him at the Foundation had. Perhaps he would understand what the Plague Doctor was fighting with his unorthodox methods, and by extension, how they could pacify him non-lethally once and for all. Dr. Bradshaw held his notebook tight as he made the long walk down the hall from his office to SCP-049's containment chamber. This was it, the moment of truth, he hoped. He had asked his colleagues to pump the scent of lavender into 049's room to put him at ease, as well as give him his dinner just in time for the meeting. He hoped that the meal, a little glass of wine, and the peaceful atmosphere would make the Plague Doctor more amenable to his line of questioning. SCP-049 was sitting in front of the wide glass window, fork and knife in hand, when Dr. Bradshaw arrived. Hello, Doctor. Bradshaw gave 049 a wave. Ah, good evening. They told me I would be having company for dinner. But where's your food, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm not hungry. Dr. Bradshaw brushed him off politely. No sense. It would be horribly rude for me to eat while you have nothing. Excuse me, he called to a guard nearby. Please bring this man a helping of what you've served me so we may dine together. With a sigh, Dr. Bradshaw nodded at the guard, giving him permission to do what the plague doctor asked. A few moments later, he too had a tray with a plate of fish and roasted vegetables and a small cup of wine on the side. Now, may I ask you some questions? The plague doctor nodded. Indeed. What is it that I can do for you? I was hoping you could teach me more about the pestilence. Dr. Bradshaw began delicately. The plague doctor perked up. Have you come to assist me with my work? My dear fellow, why did you not say so from the start? It would be my honor to provide you with all the knowledge I possess on this subject, if you intend to lend a hand. I just want to understand more about it first, Dr. Bradshaw said. It wasn't quite a lie, not really. He did want to understand. He flipped open his notebook, scanning the page for the first of the posited theories he had gathered. Is it possible that what you refer to the pestilence, you're talking about pain as a whole? The plague doctor cocked his head to the side. Oh, what do you mean? Well, you once described SCP-096 as being afflicted with an extreme case of the pestilence, I believe. And when you cure someone, they're no longer able to feel any pain, physical or emotional. I know that you mean well, but is it possible that's what you're trying to treat? The pain that naturally afflicts all human life, most living things? The plague doctor scoffed. 
You think that I, a physician, am so ignorant of pain? That I would misdiagnose agonies as something so devastating as a great dying? If you are here to insult me, sir, I will simply ask that you leave. I'm sorry, that was not my intention. Please, let me stay. I promise I'm only here to try and understand. Will you withhold judgment until I'm finished? One man of science to another? The plague doctor paused, mulling this over. He nodded. I will hear your questions and do my best to answer them. Thank you. Dr. Bradshaw smiled and returned to his notes. So, you have been in the field of medicine for quite some time, and I imagine you have studied a variety of sciences. You work with a lot of liquids and substances none of us have ever encountered before. Were they the result of alchemy? Used to balance the humors of your patients? I was curious if your treatments and if the pestilence itself is thaumaturgical in nature. That is to say, well, magical. The plague doctor let out a sharp laugh at this. <laughs> Magic! <laughs> Sir, I am no magician, nor am I an alchemist, as I have never formally studied alchemy in any form. The humors, of course, must be balanced for proper health, but that has nothing to do with alchemy, in my opinion. How is your black vial? You appear to have an excess of it. Do you experience a great deal of stomach pain? Dr. Bradshaw rushed to steer the topic away from him and his health, lest the plague doctor offer to treat him. Mm, not particularly. Next question. His eyes returned to his notes. Uh, let's see. We've noticed that you seem to cure those who are most afraid of death and dying, and when you first arrived at our facility, you stated that there was less pestilence here than other places you had been. Most of our staff have seen enough death and misfortune that it no longer frightens us. We're inoculated against it, essentially. One researcher working with you was afraid of death at first, but as he came to accept it as an inevitability, you said that he was no longer infected. Is the pestilence fear itself? Or more specifically, the fear of death? The plague doctor mulled this over. One's outlook, one's attitude can impact their health. It is easier to fight a disease when one does not let fear take over. But other than that, I'm afraid I do not understand your question. The pestilence is simply what it is. Why are you more preoccupied with categorizing it than curing it? I believe that to understand something is to know how to fight it, Dr. Bradshaw answered simply. Mm, we may differ there, but you may continue. I'm grateful for the company and for your desire to understand, mm, misguided though it may be. Thank you, Doctor. I wanted to ask you, are you familiar with the Scarlet King? The Plague Doctor's expression did not change. I have seen the rise and fall of many monarchs in my time. Why would you ask me about this Scarlet King? That wasn't a no. Well, Dr. Bradshaw began, according to legend, one of his many daughters was Pestilence, a bringer of disease and destruction. Is she the one you intend to fight? I know not every single form the Pestilence takes, only the grip it has on this world. SCP-049 answered, For your sake, I would advise you to avoid speaking of such matters. That king he is not a thing you wish to face. Dr. Bradshaw jotted down a quick note in the margin of the page. Scarlet King connection possible. Then he returned to his line of questioning. Have you spoken with SCP-343? I have. The plague doctor nodded. And what did he tell you? It is not worth going into here. According to him, the pestilence that you refer to is humanity's free will. You were changed by something a long time ago, a tragedy that turned you towards your work. You came from a dark place, one of the places even 343 can't see. Is that true? I will not answer that question. It is an insult, as CP-049 said. Again, not a no exactly, but still Dr. Bradshaw did not want to push too hard too soon and risk the doctor terminating their conversation. My apologies, I'll shift to something different. You once treated the bubonic plague, correct? SCP-049 shook his head. No, I am not familiar with that particular condition. Dr. Bradshaw had prepared for this. He pulled a medical illustration from his notebook, depicting a victim of the Black Plague. Uh, what about something like this? SCP-049 sighed. Ah, now this ailment I have encountered before. I did my best to treat it, but... It was stubborn. Is it related to the pestilence? Dr. Bradshaw asked. Not necessarily. 049 said nothing more than that. He took a sip of wine, ate a bite of potato. He wasn't going to offer any more insight into that particular theory, it seemed. I mean no offense with this next question, but... Doctor, have you always lived here? 
on this planet? Or did you make your way here from another world of some kind? Perhaps the pestilence came from wherever you did. The world has changed around me a great deal in my life, SCP-049 said. But I have always been here, at least as best as I can recall. He seemed to be telling the truth, but with that unmoving, inscrutable expression, it was difficult to be sure. This next theory would be extremely difficult to float without offending 049, but Dr. Bradshaw had to try. He needed to do his due diligence. Are you familiar with the story of Typhoid Mary? He would ease into the idea. That would probably be best. I am not. SCP-049 sounded puzzled. She was an asymptomatic carrier of typhoid, Dr. Bradshaw explained. As others grew sick around her, she remained healthy and well. She had no idea that as she worked as a cook in the houses of wealthy families, she was infecting them with a deadly disease. It was not any moral failing of her own. She didn't understand what she was doing, but she still spread the virus throughout her community. Stop right there. The plague doctor's tone was stern, tense. I know what you are suggesting, and it offends me to my core. If you do not see these file implications, I will be forced to end our talk here and now. I am a physician, sir. I do not endanger my patients so recklessly. I understand. Better to leave that theory alone for now. You said that you have always been here, but I do have to ask, have you ever heard of a place called Alagara? There are those that claim you once lived there, that you came from that kingdom. I have never heard that name that I can recall, but I have lived a long life. Perhaps I have forgotten. What nation does that belong to? Dr. Bradshaw paused. It was his turn to be stumped. I'm not sure. Do you know who the Black Lord is? He couldn't be certain, but he thought he saw SCP-049 frown. Villain. A villain. He grumbled under his breath. I banish him from my thoughts, that he may never again enter my sight. His gloved hands clenched into fists, and Dr. Bradshaw jotted down another note in the margins. The Black Lord. He had devoted plenty of time to everyone else's theories. It was time for one that he had been earnestly considering. Doctor, it is my opinion that the pestilence may be connected to emotional state or heart rate, perhaps both. When you treat your patients, do you remove the heart or the amygdala to address those issues? I've noticed heart removal during a handful of your procedures. You have a keen eye, SCP-049 enthused. However, I do not always remove the heart. It varies greatly from patient to patient, you see. For some, the heart is a crucial part of the infection. For others, it impacts the brain. Others steal the liver or the larger nervous system. That is why it is so difficult to treat, you see. It can manifest in seemingly infinite ways. But what about emotions? Negative impulses, cruelty, selfishness, hatred. Is that a component? I was reviewing your file and you mentioned an excess of the pestilence in the home of a wealthy man known for exploiting his workers and mistreating his family. When you were cross-tested with SCP-682, you remarked that the pestilence did not only impact humans, suggesting the anomaly was also infected, and you cured your patients while well, they don't seem to have a hateful impulse in their bodies. Ah. Hate can be a disease. The plague doctor took another bite of food, chewing slowly. When he swallowed, Dr. Bradshaw expected him to elaborate on this thought, but he didn't. So, Dr. Bradshaw broke the silence. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, the ones that bring about the end of the world. War, famine, death, and pestilence. There have been stories about them for thousands of years. Do you know pestilence personally? Are you protecting us from him from the end of days? SCP-049 scoffed. I work in science, not stories. I intend no disrespect to your beliefs, but surely you hear how absurd that sounds. Pestilence does not ride in on a horse. It resides in the body. You've lost patients before, haven't you? Every physician has if what they are treating is severe. It never gets any easier to do so, I'm sure. Have you ever lost someone special to you, though? Done something you truly regret? Perhaps the pestilence was a manifestation of some guilt or trauma, some shame he could never truly let go. Every man has regrets. Do you not have those secret shames, Doctor? Dr. Bradshaw changed the subject. I have always wondered this. Can you see the misdeeds that someone has done? Can you somehow sense the sins of their past, all the harm they have caused? Why do you ask? SCP-049 cocked his head again. Are you afraid I can see something within you? 
He couldn't explain why, but the question made his stomach turn. No, he answered. It was a lie. Will everyone catch the pestilence eventually? As time goes on, the odds do become greater, yes. But not everyone is doomed. Is that it? Is it time? The passage of time, aging, decay, the great dying, you called it. So is it dying itself? Your cured patients, they don't age. They never decay any more than they already have. Death is not natural. SCP-049 simply said, All things die eventually, Dr. Bradshaw argued. I have not died yet. SCP-049 took a drink of wine. Well, there was no arguing with that. Something else I've been thinking about is the possibility that the pestilence is greater than just one thing. Dr. Bradshaw began his next theory. Doctors believed at one time that the plague was caused by an imbalance of the humors in the body. They could recognize the presence of disease, but couldn't routinely tell them all apart. Several different illnesses were referred to as consumption, and leprosy was used as a catch-all for multiple illnesses as well. Clearly, you have a knack for knowing when someone is ill, but what if it's something else? Something equally bad, but different from what you think. It's cancer, or a stroke, or a heart condition. There is no one cure except for the massive transformational work you're already doing. Hmm, possible. SCP-049 mused. I will need to consider that point carefully. Perhaps you have unlocked a secret to the pestilence I missed. Then again, perhaps not. If the pestilence is not death, then I do have to wonder, is it the opposite? Life is a temporary stay for so many of us less lucky than you, and it seems like you cure your patients of natural life when you treat them. They become something not quite dead, but not quite living, at least not as they were. And illness, ailments, hurt, all comes as a natural side effect of being alive. So is the great dying life itself? I do not understand the question, and thus I will not respond to it. SCP-049 stated, Dr. Bradshaw could sense that the plague doctor was growing frustrated, getting tired of so many questions that poked at his beliefs, his research, and his process. Is the pestilence natural or something man-made? Humans have created diseases before, caused them to mutate or worsen them with chemicals we invent. Have you heard of Agent Orange? I don't mean to digress, but my point is, it's not unheard of for people to be responsible for a disease. I wonder, is the pestilence something that developed on its own? Or is it our doing? A biological weapon, a synthesized virus, or artificial mutation created by other scientists? Or maybe... Dr. Bradshaw paused here, referring once more to his notes. Is it sin? Greed, lust, wrath, pride, envy, gluttony, sloth... Maybe not that biblical, that exact, but is it evil? The sort of thing that rots away at a human soul. Not a plague of the body, but of the very essence, and the only way to cure it is to rip the whole thing out and start over. You seem to have the answers in mind before you ask me these questions, Doctor. I will allow you one more before I take my leave. I have found this whole ordeal quite exhausting. Dr. Bradshaw nodded. Okay, just one more. Is it something unnatural, not man-made, not of nature, viruses, or bacteria, but something else altogether? Something from another dimension, another world, or the spaces in between. You have been cagey about the nature of the pestilence for as long as you have been here, and I understand if you are just being cautious, but I can't help but wonder if there is something else to the reason you keep so much to yourself. You promised to tell me about the pestilence, but you've barely responded to most of my questions except to dismiss my ideas. Is the pestilence something that spreads by thought, that lives in the consciousness or the subconscious? of us all, waiting, dormant, for something to activate it and set the sickness free. The plague doctor set down his fork with a clatter. I respect your scientific curiosity, but there are things I cannot share with you. For my safety, for yours, for everyone's, do take care, doctor. You too. Dr. Bradshaw stood from his chair, collecting his notes and preparing to leave. One final thing. Dr. Bradshaw turned back to face the plague doctor. Yes? Those dark eyes watched him from inside the mask. Do you see any of the pestilence in me? The silence that passed between them felt like an eternity. Then, SCP-049 spoke. No, sir, I do not. But one day, that could change. As Dr. Bradshaw made his way back to his office, 
The words echoed in his mind, and he couldn't make up his mind whether they were comforting or troubling. He had gone into the meeting with questions, but now he had even more than he started with. Now go check out A Day in the Life of SCP-049, and can SCP-049 cure the pestilence in SCP-3008 Infinite Ikea? For more of everyone's favorite anomalous scientist.